Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at Gibbs free energy. We're going to talk about what Gibbs free energy actually is, how Gibbs free energy can be calculated, and the use of Gibbs free energy in determining whether a particular reaction is feasible at a certain temperature. Enthalpy and entropy have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. As this is an advanced topic, a few simplifications and models are used at this level to help explain this idea for students learning it for the first time. Before we talk in detail about Gibbs free energy, it is essential you are comfortable with enthalpy and entropy and how they can change in a reaction. As a quick recap for this video though, enthalpy is the heat content or thermal energy store of a substance or system. All molecules and substances have thermal energy stored up inside them, as when some of their stored energy is released, it can only flow out in the form of heat. Enthalpy change is defined as heat energy change, kilojoules per mole, measured at constant pressure. It is impossible to know the exact enthalpy of a substance. It is possible, however, to measure how the enthalpy of a substance changes when it reacts. This means in chemistry, we work with enthalpy changes, shown as delta H, rather than total enthalpy values. Exothermic reactions describe reactions where energy is released overall by the reacting particles, making the products formed lower in energy and more stable, but increasing the heat content and temperature of their surroundings. These reactions have a negative enthalpy change as the amount of thermal energy stored up inside the product is less than in the reactants. Endothermic reactions are when energy is absorbed by reacting particles, making the products formed higher in energy and less stable, but decreasing the heat content and temperature of their surroundings. These reactions have a positive enthalpy change as the amount of thermal energy stored up inside the products is more than in the reactants. The entropy of a system is based on the possible arrangements of particles or disorder within the system. Every substance has its own value of entropy as particles in different substances are ordered in slightly different ways. And this means energy is spread out in the substance differently. As energy spreads out or dissipates in a system, it becomes less useful. In fact, useless, as it can no longer be transferred out of the system as heat to do work. This energy is described as entropy, and it increases with the level of disorder and possible arrangements of particles in a system. Units for entropy are joules per kelvin per mole. Temperature changes the possible arrangements of particles within a system. Increased temperature means increased entropy. Entropy is a property a group of particles have, meaning it is measured based on the number of particles in a system. And as the standard unit for number of particles in chemistry is the mole, entropy is measured per mole of a substance. As a result of all of this, solids have lower entropies than liquids, and liquids have lower entropies than gases. Warmer systems have higher entropies than cooler systems, and systems with more particles in have a higher entropy than the same type of system with fewer particles in. In chemistry, if a reaction is feasible, it means it can, theoretically, happen based on energy changes. In other words, it's allowed to happen. The word spontaneous is also sometimes used instead of feasible at this level. Be careful, however, just because a reaction can theoretically happen doesn't mean it necessarily will. There are other factors such as activation energy and very slow rates of reaction that may mean a theoretically possible reaction may never actually occur. <laughs> Long recap done, let's go. In a reacting system, there is energy shared amongst and within all the particles. This total amount of energy is called enthalpy. Some of this energy is free to flow out of the system as heat and can be considered available and useful. But the rest of the energy is arranged in such a way among the particles that it is unable to flow out as heat. This is the entropy of the system and is effectively dispersed energy that can't be used for anything. We know that the energy content of a system can change during a chemical reaction, giving us enthalpy change, delta H. 
when the enthalpy of a system changes, the amount of useful available energy and spread out dispersed energy, that's entropy, also changes as a result. The amount of enthalpy change is made up of these two. How much the entropy changes is based on the standard entropies of reactants and products and the temperature at which the reaction happens. Meaning change in entropy using standard entropies must be multiplied by temperature to tell us how much the energy as entropy in the system is changing. This is shown as T delta S. For a reaction to be feasible, we need the amount of useful, available energy in the system to decrease overall and become more spread out in the universe in some way, increasing the entropy of the whole universe. The easiest way to check whether this would happen is to ensure that when the change in unavailable energy, T delta S, is subtracted from the overall heat energy change, enthalpy, the value is negative. As long as the value is negative, that shows that there is less available useful energy in the system after the reaction compared to before. The value obtained is called the change in Gibbs free energy. Without getting too bogged down with some intense thermodynamics, Gibbs free energy is basically just a way of describing how much energy a system has that is useful and can be used to do something, like start a reaction for example. Remember, enthalpy describes total energy in a system, and some of that energy isn't useful, entropy. Gibbs free energy can be thought of as the amount of energy that is useful. This is why a change in enthalpy equals change in Gibbs free energy plus T delta S. And we can rearrange this equation to find change in Gibbs free energy. Change in Gibbs free energy equals change in enthalpy minus T delta S. We've already looked at the fact that for a reaction to occur, energy must always ultimately end up more spread out and less useful in the universe. If Gibbs free energy increases for a system, this would mean more energy is ending up as useful energy in the system, and this isn't allowed, meaning reactions that would lead to a positive change in Gibbs free energy are never feasible. A negative change in Gibbs free energy shows us that the useful and available energy in a system is decreasing, and therefore the reaction can occur and is feasible. The total amount of energy in an isolated system is constant, meaning the total energy of the system will always equal the available, useful energy and unavailable, dispersed energy, entropy. If whenever a reaction occurs, in the universe, if the dispersed energy increases, this means the useful energy must decrease. Entropy changes with temperature, meaning the amount of energy in the system as entropy will increase with increase in temperature, and the Gibbs free energy will decrease. Mini recap. A reacting system has energy in it. This total amount of energy is called enthalpy. During a reaction, the enthalpy of the system will change. This is called enthalpy change, delta H, and it shows how much energy is either flowing into the system, positive enthalpy change, endothermic reaction, or how much energy is flowing out of the system, negative enthalpy change, exothermic reaction. Some of the energy in the system, entropy, is unavailable and unable to be transferred out as heat and is effectively useless. The rest of the energy can be transferred out as heat and is useful. How much of the enthalpy content is useful is referred to as Gibbs free energy. When a reaction happens and there is an enthalpy change, both the amount of available Gibbs free energy and unavailable entropy energy in the system will change, meaning the enthalpy change equals the change in Gibbs free energy add the change in entropy. Gibbs free energy can't really be measured directly, but the enthalpy change of a reaction can be, and the entropy change can be calculated. Entropy change is based on the temperature and the standard entropies of reactants and products, given T delta S. This all gives us an equation, delta H equals change in Gibbs free energy plus T delta S. For a reaction to be feasible, the change in Gibbs free energy must always be negative. We can easily check if this is true by rearranging the equation shown to give change in Gibbs free energy. 
change in Gibbs free energy equals delta H minus T delta S. Make sure you are careful with this equation. The units for enthalpy are always kilojoules per mole and entropy change joules per Kelvin per mole. Make sure you convert the entropy to kilojoules per mole by dividing by a thousand. This gives the units of Gibbs free energy as kilojoules per mole. Using this equation, we can see there are a couple of scenarios where a reaction is simply going to be allowed to happen and when it isn't going to be allowed to happen. If a reaction has a negative enthalpy change, exothermic minus delta H, and a positive entropy change, positive delta S, the reaction will always be feasible, as the Gibbs free energy change value will always be negative. A negative value minus a positive number gives a negative value. If a reaction has a negative enthalpy change, exothermic minus delta H, and a negative entropy change, minus delta S, the reaction can be feasible, but only at low temperatures. Negative delta H minus a negative T delta S value means a positive, and as the temperature increases, the value of T delta S gets bigger, and will eventually get bigger than delta H, meaning when subtracted from it, the result will be positive. Positive Gibbs free energy change means unfeasible reaction. If a reaction has a positive enthalpy change, endothermic, positive delta H, and a positive entropy change, positive delta S, the reaction can be feasible, but only at high temperatures. Positive delta H minus a positive T delta S value means Gibbs free energy change gets smaller as the temperature increases. The value of T delta S gets bigger and will eventually get bigger than positive delta H, meaning when subtracted from it, the result will be negative. Negative Gibbs free energy means feasible, but here the temperature has to be high enough to make T delta S bigger than delta H. If a reaction has a positive enthalpy change, endothermic, positive delta H, and a negative entropy change, the reaction is never feasible, as the Gibbs free energy change will always be greater than zero. A positive value minus a negative number gives a more positive value, meaning Gibbs free energy would always be positive. We can see that whether a reaction will occur is based on the enthalpy change of the reaction, delta H, and the effect of entropy change, T delta S. The rules shown previously also allow us to see how changing the temperature of a system can have an effect on whether the reaction can happen or not. With some further rearrangement, we can use the equation for Gibbs free energy change to find the minimum temperature at which a reaction can occur. Remember, Gibbs free energy change has to be negative. This means the temperature at which Gibbs free energy change is zero is the absolute minimum temperature that it could be. Any lower and the Gibbs free energy value would start to become positive, unfeasible reaction. If Gibbs free energy change equals delta H minus T delta S, then Gibbs free energy change plus T delta S equals delta H. When Gibbs free energy change equals zero, this means T delta S equals delta H. Dividing both sides of the equation by delta S gives us T equals delta H divided by delta S. If we know the enthalpy change for a reaction and its change in entropy, based on standard entropies of reactants and products, we can use this form of the equation to find the minimum temperature at which the reaction becomes feasible. As a final point, it is important to follow that although a reaction may be feasible at a particular temperature and can theoretically occur, this doesn't mean it always will. Kinetics, rates of reaction, and high activation energy barriers may prevent the reaction from actually occurring, or it may occur at such a slow rate that in effect, no reaction is really happening. So to summarize, the enthalpy energy of a system can be thought of as containing two sets of energy, available energy that can flow out of the system as heat and unavailable energy that is thinly spread out and can't be used for anything. The available energy of the system is referred to as Gibbs free energy and the unavailable energy is entropy, determined by the standard entropy of the particles in the system multiplied by temperature, Ts. When a reaction occurs and there is an enthalpy change, this enthalpy change occurs as a result of both the Gibbs free energy content and the entropy content of the system changing. 
This means delta H equals delta G, gives free energy change, plus T delta S. If delta H and T delta S are known, the equation can be rearranged to find Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy change equals delta H minus T delta S. For a reaction to be possible according to the laws of thermodynamics, the amount of useful energy in a system must decrease as the reaction occurs. This means the Gibbs free energy change of the system must be a negative value, showing a decrease in available energy. The units for Gibbs free energy are kilojoules per mole. Units for entropy change are joules per mole. Entropy units must be converted to kilojoules per mole in this calculation. By using delta H and T delta S values for a possible reaction, we can use the equation shown to find out whether Gibbs free energy change would be positive or negative. If positive, reaction isn't feasible. If negative, reaction is feasible and could happen. We don't know for certain if it will, as a high activation energy barrier or very slow rate of reaction may mean it doesn't actually happen in reality. The value of Gibbs free energy change changes with temperature due to T delta S. This means sometimes the feasibility of a reaction will be based on the temperature of the system. If a reaction has a negative enthalpy change and a positive entropy change, the reaction will always be feasible, as the Gibbs free energy value will always be negative. If a reaction has a negative enthalpy change and a negative entropy change, the reaction can be feasible, but only at low temperatures. If a reaction has a positive enthalpy change and a positive entropy change, the reaction can be feasible, but only at high temperatures. If a reaction has a positive enthalpy change and a negative entropy change, the reaction is never feasible, as the Gibbs free energy value will always be greater than zero. The minimum temperature at which a reaction can occur can be found by using T equals delta H divided by delta S. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.